But something to keep in mind is a lot of people in these situations, they'll only think about themselves. You have to imagine what the defenders feel like right now. Like, I have a lot of time to my advantage. I'm working the picks, I'm working my angles, and I got two picks out of it, and I still have uh, 70 seconds left. And it just went from a 1v4 to, uh, to a 1v2. All right, chat, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play this out. I'm gonna, like, explain my decision-making. And then, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just ask away. Alright, so they're like that air jab. Like, like, what a lot of people do is, like, in these situations, they'll, they'll just pretty much, like, give up. Like, a 2v4 is winnable, especially, like, with what we have to our advantage. Like, you, you just heard the aces uh, open here on the breach, so as you see... Um, the aces are open. Um, so the aces are open, so that's to our advantage. If this wasn't like this, like, if the, if the wall was still closed, then probably wouldn't be as winnable as it is. But either way, aces on the wall, open, so we're in a pretty decent spot. My teammate just dies there, so it went from a 2v4 to a 1v3, because I technically got, like, a refrag in terms of man, or, uh, man count. But yeah, like, I'm just setting up my air jab here. And then once that's set up, so now that's, like, a safety net, because the aces are opening the wall. Uh, yellow is air jab, so the only thing I really need to worry about in terms of pressure is the breach and CO windows. And then what I'm doing here is pretty much looking for a pick, because we have two minutes left. Um, 2v4, that's like pretty much like a, a, a guarantee that like one or two of the defenders are gonna go look out for picks or like just get aggressive. And then, with what I have with time here, um, I'm literally just holding an angle. To make someone make a mistake for me that's like all i'm doing here i'm pretty much just baiting so to speak but i'm still actively looking for a pick but i'm allowing the defenders to make the mistake and walk into me and that's what happens here with this mute he's shotgunning the piano floor open i now what you should assume from this is that might be for the for the oryx or the alibi above because that's a pretty common thing to do is like hold piano um if the attackers don't have control of it so that's what i'm assuming that they're doing and that's like in the back of my mind and you'll see that come into play later on in the round uh, in terms of my like positioning and, and decision making. Um, unfortunately, there though I whiff the I whiff the um, the shot, and then there, I mean the Oryx is stationary. I know the angle. I face checked it um, because I didn't want to use my drone yet because it's a one v three. If my drone gets shot, then I won't have that much information. And as you saw there, I had two drones out still. Now something to keep in mind here with this is that. So there I just listened for a second, I went stationary, I tried to listen for if someone was close. Um, but something to keep in mind is, a lot of people in these situations, they'll only think about themselves. Like, the, like you have to imagine what the defenders feel like right now. Like, I have a lot of time to my advantage, I'm working the picks, I'm working my angles, and I got two picks out of it and I still have uh, 70 seconds left. And it just went from a 1v4 to a, to a 1v2. Now I'm like sitting pretty well, and I have two drones still. Someone have diffuser control. How do I plan to push the breach? Um, that, that really depends on, like, where the, like, the defenders are positioned. Like, as I said previously, like, with the, with the mute making those holes in the piano floor, or, like, the, the garage, uh, ceiling, um, I'm not really gonna go over to that area. So, it really depends on where their position is how I'm gonna push. Now, I see the default cam here up as well, so I need to keep note of that. I see this alibi here, so as I'm droning... I'm not only listening, but I'm looking for utility, mute jammers, like I saw the mute jammer side white van, I saw the one in the drone hole. So I'm really like taking note of things so that way when I do peek them or face check or go for the gunfight, I'm not caught off guard and maybe want to flick to this alibi over here, right? Because I think it's her. Um, so I'm keeping note of these things so that way I can avoid them uh, when I do go for the gunfights. There, I'm, I'm literally just sitting. So as you saw there, um, I see the holes, so that's what I was talking about earlier with the holes in the piano floor. And then I just, like, sat on my drone and listened for a second to see what I heard. I retrieved the diffuser, which was my next step in the clutch. Um, you always want to have diffuser control because that's like a safety net as, a, as an attacker. So I see this, so now that I know both are here, I saw the mute rotating and I saw the alibi there. So I know that I have a split second or two of, um, 1v1 engagement, and that's really important in these situations like 1v2s or plus like 1v5s 1v4s 1v3s 1v2s right uh if it's not a 1v1 you need to take your ones when you have the opportunity to and as i swing here you see that uh i, I took the gunfight and the alibi i killed her now since the mute was going into the rotate i probably wouldn't pl have played this aggressive because i still have a drone and i still have 30 seconds left so i don't necessarily need to be overly aggressive like i am here but I am doing that. 
So that's really important what I just did there. I'm using that flash to crowd control the mute because if he swings out Cafe Door, he's going to have more of an advantage because he's going to be swinging out behind the yellow pillar. So like he's going to be swinging out behind this or he might swing to the right. So I don't want that uh, possibility of two different um, options for him because like the, the, the white rotate, the back white rotate in the cafe, it's only one option. He has to walk through. And then if he's back white, I know that. And then now I have a situation that I need to deal with there. But I didn't want him to be comfortable going there. So that's why I threw the flash for one of the reasons. And for the other reason was to mask the sound of my air job going off there. And then I stick the plant. So now I know that if he's in cafe, he only has two options really. He either has to go cafe door, uh, which is where I'm pre-aiming here. Or he has to go through security into highway here, which is like that long double door hallway over there. So I hear him cafe rotate there right before he trips the air jab. And this is why I used my flash. As you see here, he doesn't know the, the nomad is there. He should have heard it, but I think his audio might have bugged. But he didn't hear it go down because I used the flash to mask the sound of it. And then I'm pretty much just planting and baiting because I had roughly like 25 seconds or 30 seconds um, to play around with. So uh, I planted here and i'm actively looking for the gunfight and if he doesn't swing me here then i still have two flashes to fall back on and then i would stick the plant there but you know he walked into my air job pretty much gave me a freebie so uh some big things there were taking the 1v1 engagements when i had to using the drones um and not playing overly aggressive until i had those 1v1s uh to my advantage like on the alibi and the mute there also another thing when you're in these situations is you always want to check the time like if you're not doing something actively you should be looking at the time so like as my drone is jumping here, I can't control it, right? So I'm, I'm glancing up at the time, minute 08. When, when I'm droning like this, I'm obviously not looking at it. I'm looking at the Mew Jammers, looking around as I'm droning. Um, I see that there. I might glance at the time here. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So taking the opportunity to always look at the time um, so that way you know the tempo that you should kind of be following because as an attacker, the time is against you until you have the diffuser down. Any questions or anything, chat? Why do you take yellow? Because if you take yellow, there's too many possibilities. Like, on Breach, I can take gunfights and eliminate the angles when I need to. Meanwhile, on Yellow Stairs, if you peek, like, Cafe Door, for example, they might swing you all the way from Side White Van. Like, they might swing you from over here, looking yellow, if I'm, like, on yellow here, looking Cafe Door. So, you, you can, like, be more selective in the gunfights, and, and, like, from this position versus yellow. Would you jump out of the Breach after Plant is down, or would you stay inside and play the air jab? It depends if I had the flashes still. If I still had the flashes there in that in that situation, like as I'm planting, um, with the air jab still on the, the rotate, I would probably go outside breach. I would like flash, uh, like close cafe door and then flash hallway because that's where I know he can only be, right? And then I would go outside breach. Like that, that secondary utility there, like flashes, um, nades, smokes are really important in these situations because... Especially like a 1v4, you don't have your teammates' support with you. So you need to rely on other sources in terms of your own information, of, of your own drones, uh, and your own utility. Like you need to be maximizing that as much as possible. Okay, so in this situation here, just to provide a little bit of context, I was being held from small tower. I think small tower window. There, so there was someone around here holding me. So I, wasn't re I didn't really have the ability to rotate when I wanted. And if I did, I would be out of small tower much faster than this because the attackers are primarily doing a, like a dying or a uh, uh, a meeting take so yeah i can't really leave when i want to now i know somebody is yellow window i knew that somebody was there or no there was somebody yellow hall rather sorry i hear this guy here i hear him go prone there thought he was a little bit deeper but um audio cues are really really important in these situations here um like right here, I hear him go prone right there. It's, it's kind of hard to, to get, but what I want to uh, bring up with this is audio cues are really important in these situations because you don't have your teammates to rely on, as I just, just said. And also, you don't have, you know, uh, especially in this situation, you don't have like Meister cams, Velt cams, and stuff. So understanding audio cues and relying and trusting what you hear is very important. And if you don't know audio cues, then... Uh, custom game might help or something like that. Um, and same here. I had to face check this. So as you see, I'm kind of taking the gunfights as uh, one-on-ones. I'm not like overly swinging here on this green door, for example. Like I, I'm quick, quick leaning this. I see it. 
Nobody shoots at me. I don't see anyone. So I, um, I check mark this angle off for now until I clear the rest of the room with my face. Now it's not. I'm not going to assume that this is clear for the entire round because you know the attacker uh, could be rotating over here, right? From meeting once they get plant down, so they could rotate green door. Uh, so I'm not going to assume that it's clear, and that's something that is really important in these situations uh, for winning them in clutches is assumption. You shouldn't assume things are clear unless you have factual information or whatever it is on it. So assumption is a really bad habit that people build in s these situations, and confidence is also something that people lack. You just got to be confident in yourself. So I don't know if you heard that there. Uh, but this audio cue, if I go back... They have meeting wall open. So right there, you heard an audio cue. Now, to some people who don't know what that is, um, that's the sound of somebody crouching or standing up. There's a little bit of a distinction. I don't know off the top of my head which one is which. But in this situation here, that was somebody crouching. Now, I know from previous information, since I just face-checked... They have meeting wall open. Here, I know from previous information that nobody's there. And then I see this here as well, so the only two angles from where I heard that audio cue would be here on this little cabinet right in front of me, or that back tipped over fridge that I just looked at previously, right? So I know that that person is beyond the angle of which I just face-checked on the fridge, because he's obviously not here, right? Or else I would see him before he crouches. So as I, as I kind of advance, you hear the audio cue there, and then I know exactly where this guy's at. I know he's crouched behind the back of the fridge, because I face checked the thing in front of me, the only the only other thing that would have the audio cue um, in that general area and that object, right? So I kill him. Now I eliminate the angle of all of meeting. Like I don't cross right here because I know this breach is open, or else you know that, how would they access the bomb site? That this wall is open to an extent. I don't know where. I don't know you know what what was used on it. So I eliminate the swing on the right because I don't want to expose myself to too much. Again, same thing with the consulate clutch. I'm eliminating as many angles as I can so that way I can take them one by one um, and kind of pre-plan your route of what you want to do. Now, something that I did do wrong here in the situation is what I said earlier about assumption. Um, I was assuming that this guy was going to be playing meeting. Luckily, he was. He could have very easily been holding green hallway here from the left that I mentioned previously. So there... Another thing that I did, assumption, I thought he was going to be holding from deep in meeting, not from split, or anything like that. So, another mistake that I made here was I skipped these angles here that I should have checked before I peeked all the way to the left here in deep meeting. But nonetheless, um, I take the gunfight, I deal a little bit of damage on him, I believe, and then I advance off of that because now I know where he is, and I need to react off of this information because I don't want to allow him to achieve a better position than me. Um, by me stalling or not really pushing. So I do that. So something else that I did wrong here, as you can see, like in, in the uh, in the recording, I jump the angle and then I start tracking on this table. So I kind of jumped from here to here um, on the angle. I didn't really check this and that very easily could have got me dead, but you know, I, I, so I, much I managed to flick onto him and kill him. So a lot of things that I did wrong there was like assuming angles were clear like the green door and also not fully checking angles that I should have before I committed to another one. And then lastly, the third mistake was, you know, me jumping angles. I wasn't smooth on the tracking there. Why didn't you go servers from Yellow Hall? Um, because I know that in this 1v3 here, I'm, I'm, I'm going under the impression just from past experience that since I killed this thermite here, um, like, once I kill this thermite here, I know that they're probably going to be planting, because they're going to be calling out. Okay. This thermite's going to be calling out to them, and they know where I'm at based off the thermite dying. So, I know that one's going to be planting, and then one's going to be covering, right? Like, that's pretty, that's pretty default. Yeah, like, I I'm just going under the, I'm just going under my past experience of, like, one plants, one covers, right? Like, that's pretty default thing. So that's why I don't go, that's why I don't go servers hall from yellow. Because I know that they're going to be planting for the most part. And if they're not, then I have the advantage there on the plant. Because I know that they're coming from meeting. Because that's where they're primarily attacking from.